the long slumber is over. On worlds under siege by the Arcs of Omen, the Primarch Lion L. Johnson has finally emerged. He is healed and fueled by his hatred for all things chaos. Here on Wormwood, the Lion and his Dark Angels face an imposing challenge. Angron, Demon Primarch of the World Eaters. This is 40k in 40 minutes. Dark Angels versus the Red Angel. This will be a thousand point battle. It'll be quick, it'll be bloody, and it'll be glorious. I am here to play some World Eaters, and I'm excited because I get to play against Tack and we have some super secret Dark Angels to fight against. I am playing Dark Angels today. Why? Because there is a new Primarch on the table, and I get to field it. Lionel Johnson is accompanied by a small contingent of his loyal Dark Angels who will test their strength against the raging World Eaters. I have been painting Dark Angels nonstop for about the last week because this game is the first of a two-part series where we get to test the Lion against Angron and then the next opponent that you'll find out after this episode. The game evolves, the rules change, but what never goes out of style is stories told from epic clashes like this. In today's offering, we bring to life a story battle from out of the pages of the Arcs of Omen narrative. A fight 10,000 years in the making. Big thing I'm excited for in this match, both our armies very melee focused, but we also have two really killy Primarchs on the table. And it's going to be about who's going to spill the most blood. The World Eaters are Rage Incarnate. They take to the battlefield to collect skulls for the Skull Throne and spill blood for the Blood God. Karn the Betrayer and Lord Invocatus lead the World Eaters against the Dark Angels. Three squads of Berserkers make up his main force, and they are accompanied by the Eightbound. Then there's Angron himself. You are nothing but a skull to be cast before the Blood God's throne. You are meat to be bled for his glory. Now fight me and die, so I can get on with butchering your miserable sons! Oh, Angron needs a cup of coffee. We wanted this game to be a showcase of what is happening actually in the narrative, Arcs of Omen, with Angron versus a lion. A lone captain in Phobos armor watches his Deathwing comrades engage in a vicious test of might. Two squads of Bladeguard veterans, one six-man, will lead the charge. They are supported by a Primaris Apothecary and a Brutalis Dreadnought. Commanding from the front is none other than the Primarch himself, Lionel Johnson, who shall see to it himself that Angron is stopped here and now. Mission we're playing today is Deliverance. Objectives are of course worth points, and it'll be interesting to see what our players choose to do, considering how small their forces are. Do I take points? Do I kill the enemy? For secondaries, movement shows an assassination and grind them down. He's also taken pile the skulls. Movement looks to do what world leaders do best. Kill, maim, burn! Tag has chosen assassination, oaths of moment, and shock tactics. All of these require the destruction of enemy units, so we're gonna see some pretty aggressive play for both sides. I predict an absolute slaughter vest. Free game moves here, nothing in reserves, all the chips are on the table. Deploy your forces, gent, and get to crumpin'. Wait a minute, they're not orcs. All the green, I got confused. Movements put Angron right on the line, so at this point he's kind of forced the game to be as bloody as we're predicting. We talked about this before, it's such a brutal game, close quarters game. I will have to try to shield my line with a very valuable unit. Let's get some exalted eight bound on the line here. World leaders are deploying right on the line. Nothing but pure aggression here. I think we're just gonna go for it. The line's gonna back up his buddies. Oh yeah. It's a squad of berserkers following up behind Angron. Angron moves so quickly that he can probably get around my flank. So I'm going to protect this side with another squad of Blade Guard vets. Karn, the betrayer. And because where would Karn go without a posse of berserkers? Well, there's only one way to deploy in this game. It's world eaters. We're charging. On the line, Angron leading the charge. Let's go. The Dark Angels surround their Primarch. He can do a lot of damage, but Tack's worried about how much he can take, and he has got to be careful to protect him a bit here. He's even got a nice little skull on his shoulder. Skulls for the Skull Throne. 
He just sees like the picture of a skull. Mine! <laughs> uh, I'm gonna put down Lord Invocatus down here. This is still an objective game. It is. And you're gonna wanna crash this line, which means this might be the only survivor. Normally I play very tactical strategic games. I like to have a lot of units that go and get objectives and, and do other types of scoring other than killing. However, in a smaller point game with the units that I have, there's only one thing to do, put everything on the line, try to go first, try to kill everything. Bloop. Uh, this could be a real quick one. It could be. You definitely want to go first. Yeah, I kind of really want to go first. I really need to go first too, so we'll see what happens. Five. Six. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> good luck, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> World Leaders Win Initiative, things are about to go berserk. This game sponsors everyone that supports our dream of being the most entertaining and fun tabletop gaming channel on YouTube. When you like our content, comment or subscribe, you're telling us to keep on doing what we're doing. And we can't do this without the support of YouTube members and patrons who enjoy our community interactions on Discord, exclusive content like this amazing multi-level battle I had with Nick, and early access to 40k in 40 minutes. We even have a second game featuring the lion ready on early access. Making our style of content is a lot of work. A 40k in 40 minutes involves a script writer, players, videographer, graphic designer, editor, two editors sometimes, and a commenter like yours truly. Often over 80 plus hours goes into every single episode. When we get something amazing like Early Access, which thank you Games Workshop for doing so, it can get even crazier, as Tack here had to paint us a Dark Angels army and the Lion in a matter of a single week. So, if you like what we do, please consider supporting us by interacting with this video, joining YouTube membership or Patreon, and using our affiliate links below to get amazing cool things like our dice. We want to keep making content. We want to continue to be a leader in this field and we never stop innovating. We want to be able to fly out all over the world and interact with our fans even more. And we want to do all of this as sustainably as possible so we don't completely burn ourselves out because we want to do this for a long, long time. Links in the description below. Now, back to the game. Start of my turn, gonna go up to six command points because I chose to give Angron his Warlord trait. Angron's gonna do what Angron always does. You can't fall back. Angron uses Lord of Arena ability to give himself rerolls to hit and activates Righteous Slaughter, which means nobody's doing any falling back near him, including himself. Angron's just gonna hop right into his little summoning circle. This is my altar. I'll advance them. Well, they want that objective, right? Oh. Just barely. Using a Berserkers to grab objectives. World Leaders and objectives? This unit of Berserkers also going to advance, because run. Ooh, run. So because they have an, an extra two inch movement, they get to basically ignore the crater and they get to move the full 12. Karn doesn't want to be left alone. He does. No, he doesn't. He rolled a six two. I think this is the best they've ever done so far. Mubin's winning in the Mubin phase. I am winning the Mubin phase. And Mikatis is gonna just go there. The eight bound. Psychic phase and shooting phase don't make me laugh. World leaders onto the charge phase, and here we go. Angron into the Brutalis. Tack has not had much luck with his Brutalis Dreadnought, and with Angron charging it, I think the new model syndrome trend is gonna continue. I'm going to Overwatch with the Brutalis. You have so many guns on that thing. I do. Tack's gonna spend a command point here to fire Overwatch. Small arm fire planks off a wound, but here come the Meltas. <laughs> hit twice with a reroll in there. Oh, uh, winning on threes. With the reroll. Oh, come on. Oh no! Yes! Four up involved! No! I don't want to take it. And movement command rerolls and succeeds. No melt a shot goes through. Thank God for rerolls. That Overwatch did nothing. One damage isn't a lot. Okay. Well, you know what that means. Yep. Charge. I think a seven will do. Seven will definitely do it. I just painted it. That's all my charges. Time for death. So looking for twos, re-rolling. All right, here goes. D3 plus two for all of these because you're a Dreadnought. Oh, that's a lot. 25 damage. That's with the damage reduction. The Brutalis was waving a big old skull at Angron, like waving a big red flag to a bull. Not a good choice. Angron sees a skull. Angron wants skull. Angron takes skull. <laughs> I have had zero luck with Brutalis Dreadnoughts. I love painting them, they're pretty, but in every single game I've played with them, they have done nothing. I hope Steve has better luck with it next time. 
Does he go boom at least? Nope. Uh. And then he's gonna stay there because I'm not giving your blade guard free attacks. I got a kill, which gives me only one kill for grind him down. I just have to weather the storm and hopefully tack doesn't kill any of my units. Losing the Brutal sucks, but Moomin only got one kill, and now Angron and the Lion get to happen, so I'm pretty happy about that. World Leaders only managed a kill this turn. That might not be enough to score grind them down. All Tack needs to do is one to deny Moomin that. We knew that this game was going to be bloody. There's already a unit deleted off the table turn one, and I've yep. got a very angry Primark in my face. Moomin phase now. Tack is in a pickle, and that pickle's name is Angron where to go and what to do because I need to start to whittle that stuff down and I mean he could kind of do it on his own can he kill Angron on his own Ooh, potentials there all this humming and hawing it's clear attack does not normally play small point games nor melee focused armies and he's got to figure out what he could do where not a lot of tricks with only a thousand points at a small board this has to happen this is what Everyone wants to see. We'll go into the shooting phase, then we'll start off with the lion. Okay. It's going to shoot the plasma. That is a wound. Angron, I believe. I don't believe. Two damage down to 15 on Engron. Even though I made a uh, advanced move with the Phobos Captain, that is an actual assault rifle. Don't go shooting Karn. Oh, I'm going to shoot Karn. Don't shoot Karn. He just wants to be angrier. He's hitting on threes because it's I advanced. It hits. Four here. That is a three. Womp womp. And then now it's just going to be the heavy bull pistol. Six man squad of Blade Guard Vets is one of them is going to throw a crack grenade at Angron. Oh, okay. And the other five will shoot their pistols at the Berserkers. The five uh, heavy pistol shots into the Berserkers. Two of them were ones for rerolls. I hit with three. Wounding on fours. Four ups. I make both. <laughs> All right, then the one crack grenade into Angron. It's turn six, so I'm still winning on fives. That is a wound. Does he make the save? He makes the save. Then these three are just going to fire their bolt pistols at the Berserkers. Try to pull them in closer. Miss one. Not in reroll range. If you want. They're okay. Apparently I'm making all my saves today. Uh, apparently you are. What I really needed was I really needed some of those pistols to kill a single Berserker to force movement to come closer to me. That would have allowed that charge to be shorter and that would have allowed the Apothecary to stay in restorative range, but instead, now I have nothing but long bomb charges to make. Let's do the hard one first, this Blade Guard unit. Uh, they have to charge over a crater at the eight bound, so they need a nine. So what happens, I need this natively because I really want to save my reroll for the six math. That's probably a good call. That is a three. Oh, no. Fighting first matters so much when you have so few assets on the field. tax has got to be considering trying to sink every charge and minimize Mubin's clapback. Command point. On a nine? Yep. Set to reroll the hardest charge he's got. Oh no, the blade guards are stuck doing nothing. Oh, oh so close. It's a five inch charge going into the berserkers Just with the, the six man. Okay. There's my uh, ten. Ooh. I still get an apothecary. But then when I pile, the apothecary range is only three inches. The lion is just gonna go for Angron. Originally, I had wanted to charge the lion in a way that keeps them on that back objective. However, knowing that the Blade Guard vets are gonna need reroll support, I think I'm gonna need to move them up the board and leave that objective. It's not a scoring play, but I need to maximize kill potential here. Otherwise, this game is lost. Now, the real question is who starts first? Because you have an interrupt. I can interrupt. As much as I need the Blade Guard vets to go first, I'm going to trust in their Ability to survive. Right now, they're still within three of the Apothecary, so I still have the double saves. Have to go the line first. Line versus Angron, Primark versus Primark. This is what everyone was waiting for. We know which Primark's better. Fealty, his sword, comes with a whopping 10 attacks, plus one because he still has Angels of Death. The way that his rules written, his rerolls affects himself. Oh, it affects characters too, okay. I'm gonna go with a big swing. Rerolling ones, thank God. I'm not rolling as hot as you. Did I take your orange dice juju away from you? Maybe. 
BLT is string 10 AP5, flat four damage each. And you've got 15 wounds? I got 15 wounds. I need to fail four of them to die. Angron is probably gonna be in for a real bad time here. So I'm winning on threes, rerolling ones. Tack doesn't feel he's got enough through and command rerolls for another wound. That is a three. Oh. If you spike your force here, you survive. Let's see if I can spike it. What a roll for Moobin. Angron is gonna live and a command reroll to keep Angron in his second bracket. Oh, wow. So I only feel two. So you take eight damage? Eight damage down to seven. Oh, the lion didn't kill Angron. The lion did not kill Angron. I've still got command points. I'm going to spend two to interrupt. Moobin spends two command points on counteroffensive to see if his berserkers can maim those blade guard vents before they go poof. Oh, no. <laughs> Then I've got sixes, spike, not a single one. Kill, maim, burn. That's a couple more skulls for the skull throne. That was a bad roll. That was, um, that was pretty bad. Okay, my turn. 11? Nine, 11. Tell stories, dice. Tell stories. I made one six? Deathwing Bladeguard veterans with support from the Primarch finish the Berserkers. That kill is huge. That kill does two things. It scores me shock tactics. And if the Primarch survives, if Lion survives the attacks from Angron, I will also deny him Grind them down. Angron gets to fight back. Even in second bracket, Angron is a force to be reckoned with. I really have never been this nervous to roll dice. I just painted him, and people are excited to see what he can do. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. And then I bounce one mortal back. Ow. And on the off chance that you may not kill him, command reroll one of these. Yes. Oh. Thank goodness I spiked my saves. However, two still went through. And now I need Mubin to do the Mubin special. Minimum is four and four. So I do eight minimum. He has nine wounds. Wait. Does he? Does he live with one wound? He lives with one wound. Only one wound. I don't know how often we see this on play on, but only one wound left. The lion is limping. The lion is alive. Better than a two would have killed him. And a turn one scoring. Moobin has no points with three command points. Tack has four for shock tactics and three for oath a moment. Gives him seven points with four command points. In a small point battle like this, every turn could swing hard. What's left on the table, tax lead's probably gonna evaporate pretty quick here if the world leaders bring the pain and it's on to Moobin's turn too. In what ways would you like to kill me now? All of them. Eight points primary for Moobin, it takes him to eight to seven in his favor with four command points to tax five. I've got some movements to do. I've got a lot of potential targets. These boys are just gonna continue moving up. Moving on up. Karn's gonna take out those four blade guard by himself. Invocatus is gonna run across, take out the Apothecary. Eight bound, going after that Blade Guard squad in the back. And those two Berserker squads, well, they're just gonna move forward and, oh look, they're on objectives. Moving could have got greedy and put units into the line to finish it off. However, he's playing for points. He's going after the right units. Uh, he's diversifying his forces. He's holding some forces back to score on objectives. He's making a lot of smart plays. Psychic phase and shooting phase are a complete joke to world leaders. They don't exist in that land. We go right to charges. Here we go. Start with the exalted eight bound into that three man squad of blade guards. Go. Hey, they rolled an eight. Corn wants it. Invocatus. Last but not least, Karn. He rolls a two. Thank God he was close enough. <laughs> that lone captain watches on from afar as the dark angels are being engaged on all fronts. Hey, he should have taken that second game. I think you should leave that objective and come for the line. No, the Primarchs are gonna duke it out. No one's allowed to interfere there. Angron wants the glory. Angron needs to survive though. Yeah, but he still wants the glory. Besides, Angron can come back. How many blood types of points do you have? I'm at three right now. This is gonna be bloody. Karn <laughs> is gonna be coming in with 10 attacks because he charged. Let's see how he does. So if I fail every single one of these, he takes the squad out by himself. I see one, I see two. Oh, I three! See three. <laughs> so I'm spending the one command point. So right now only one has survived. I need another four here. What an absolute murder machine. Only one pesky blade guard survives. Got one surviving. This is exactly what I needed because 
that still gives me the chance of scoring all the moment. Whoop. Gonna let me attack, eh? Oh yeah! Karn's all about the fighting. Two command points on counteroffensive, so I'm yeah. going down to two. Attack interrupting here with counteroffensive for two command points, and those blade guard vets are gonna swing at the eight bound. Seven saves. One eight bound down, that's gonna give the death a chance of survival. Let's go with Invocatus, let's see what he can do. Eight attacks with the Coward's Bane, which is his chain axe. Lord Invocatus raises the Coward's Bane above the head of the Apothecary, mutters something about maiming, killing, burning, and then murderizes the formerly living snot out of that medic. Three points for assassination and a giant blood stain on the mat. Five phase stuff in terms of order, still a little confusing. They might fix that in tenth. Hopefully. But with Martial Exemplar, I get to basically fight first with the lions. Kill Angron, he's gonna come back. I see how it is. But it's not gonna be until my next turn. Winning on threes. Yep. Was that the farm? Oh, but I get three roll. Nope, that is the, the farm. farm. Angron has paid dearly for leaving the lion alive on a single wound. The Red Angel has left the building for now. Saw that coming. Angron's down. But I've got enough blood type points. I'm still in this game. The line is taking out Angron. And now I can use this Primark to get around and kill some priority targets off of my back. Blade Guard Sergeant into Karn. Oh no, I've got the 8 bound actually. Starting with the regular Exalted 8 bound with his Inviscerators. Fours. I can do this. No, I can't. Because now dual chain fists come into play. And they go damage three, because there are actually two of them. With both his chain fists, he's just gonna give you a hug and rip you in half at the same time. I'm gonna spend a command point. I'm gonna reroll one of those. Okay. Nope, didn't matter. So the guy cleaning his sword for some reason survives. I believe the only fight left <laughs> is now that lone sergeant into Karn. Hitting on twos because I did not move. Karn is only T4. He's only T4. All of them. Ooh, four? Four. He makes three of them. Your saves today have been on point. They have been. This is the best rolling I think I've ever seen you do. 11 to seven at the end of Movin's turn. He scored three points on assassination. He's got eight on primary. The blood god would be pleased. This turn was absolute slaughter. So much killing, so much maiming. Not enough burning though. This is gonna be interesting. He's got one captain on an objective. He's gonna tie the game up here with four on primary, but I this is not looking good. Thousand point games go fast. Very few assets on the table that I need to do a lot of work with. Into the shooting phase, take the captain. I'm gonna take a shot at uh, Lord uh, Invocatus. That is a hit. Five. That is a no. one. Then I'm going to shoot with the plasma into Lord Invocatus as well. I uh, get to reroll. For a pinball demon save. Nope. Two damage. Repeat turn one. Pistols do nothing. Captain does nothing. The world leaders care not for bullets today. Declaring charges. Lion into Lord Invocatus. The priority here is to take out Lord Invocatus and I retake my home objective. So we're going to go with the lion. The full 11, 11 attacks. attacks. Lionel Johnson may be the Imperium's ultimate executioner. Take that, Lehman Russ. 11 attacks with fealty, the sword that does four damage every hit. Looks like he's gonna make guacamole out of Lord Avocado. Hitting on twos. Rerolling ones. Winning on threes. threes. Rerolling ones. Can Invocata survive this? Does he survive? Does he? No, no, you're kidding me. Holy. <laughs> How did he survive? Those saves were insane! Yes! How, Moobin? How? The Dice Gods! <laughs> he fails one! One! Invocatus is down to two wounds, but he lives! Oh, Lionel Johnson has fallen flat! The Dark Angels may now have fallen apart! Why does the script have fallen capitalized? Fallen. Fallen. What the heck, Tack? Fallen! I was not expecting that. Neither was I. Who would you like to go with first? We both know who wants to go first. Karn. This is a big one. Can I wound? My dice are gonna catch up to yours eventually, right? They should. Oh no! Tack needs that center objective. Alex use a command point to try oh, to wow. save the blade guard vet. 50-50. Yes. Who's gonna murder who next? Hit on twos. Rerolling the one. Nope. Force. 
four ups. I feel one. Kills the one. Kills the wounded one. Let's do the exalted eight pound and double chain fist away. And only wounded on fours. Only on fours. Oh. God. Up to seven blood tithe points. Can you finish off Karn? No rerolls this time, but you are hitting on twos. I'm hitting on twos. All right, here we go. All of them. Apparently I've been making four ups. Apparently you have. So Can I do it again? Probably, maybe. <laughs> yep. Wow. <laughs> Give me a fighting chance, Mubin. Two wounds remain. Time for Invocatus to fight. Can the lion survive again? Starting with the Coward's Bane. And on fours. <sighs> fours. Only two. No invuls against these and AP three. So I have five ups. Lives! Oh my god, he <laughs> lives! The Emperor protects! But, but. I still have the three attacks from the bladed horn. <laughs> Don't do this to me. Fours. And the line goes down to a chainsaw horn on the head of a juggernaut. Ouch. Unfortunately, looking at the table state, I'm going to call it here. There isn't any more scoring units on my side of the table. In Mubin's turn, he's going to be able to wipe out both. And on top of that, insult to injury, he has enough blood tithe points to bring Angron back. Invocatus, still alive, barely. Karn's still barely alive. The eight bound is still barely alive. And I can bring Angron back. This day, the world leaders have claimed victory. With ample sacrifices of blood and skulls, the warp gates rip open once more, and from Immaterium comes forth Angron yet again. Dark Angels must accept defeat and withdraw. Tack concedes, Moobin claims victory for corn and blood and skulls. Final score is gonna be with paint, world leaders 33 to Dark Angels 29. I finally won! <laughs> the lion now turns his gaze to the only other loyalist Primarch in the galaxy. As the Imperium burns and hope wanes, a flicker of doubt may be crossing Johnson's mind. Is Rabuti Gulliman the right man to lead the Imperium? In the grim dark universe that only knows war, there's only one way to ascertain the worth of any man. Battle. We want to thank you for watching this battle, Games Workshop for sending us early access, and all of you, our supporters, that help keep the lights on so that we can keep creating content. Please comment your thoughts on these smaller battles. Do you like the pace? Do you enjoy the constant action? Does it drive you crazy? Do you, do you think I should wear pants? These are things we need to know. And remember that right now, there's a second part to this narrative available for early access at Patreon or YouTube membership coming to YouTube in the near future. Membership is a key factor to ensure we have all the resources to pull off the play on tabletop style shows. Members get access to the early releases of 40K in 40 minutes, as well as exclusive content like Hell on Wheels, a custom game scenario where the battlefield actually moved. You'll want to see the escapades of Speedy the Dreadnought in this one. Membership also gains you access to our Discord community. It's an active and happening place where you can discuss all things hobby and tabletop gaming. Links to Patreon and YouTube membership are in the description, as well as links to our affiliates where you can get products for your own tabletop games. Thank you to Tack for your rush paint job on the Dark Angels and the Lion. Tack would also like to thank Dr. Vancouver, Tycho, and Ben for helping out with building all the models. And congratulations, Moobin, on your well-earned and bloody victory. Can't wait to see you next time for Gulliman vs. the Lion, Ultramarines vs. Dark Angels, here in the far-flung future of a grimdark universe. And until the next time we see you in that far-flung future of a grimdark universe, play on! Remember that this is only a 1,000 point game. Not only is it a thousand points, there are two prime marks on the table. So this was always meant to be fast, always meant to be bloody, and I had a blast. Uh, Move was always a ton of fun to play. Playing against the line was really interesting with a melee focused army and just seeing him crash into lines and just do the damage that he does. He's actually really scary, but now I'm actually curious to see how he does with the other assets of Dark Angels, because you have the Raven Wing, you still have your classic Dark Angels with all the plasma. He's not only a force multiplier, but he also dishes out some major damage in hand-to-hand -hand combat.